G'day, I'm Warwick Schiller and welcome back to another episode of The Principles of Training. I'm Warwick Schiller and welcome back to The Principles of Training. In this final episode for this series, I want to recap on something we've been talking about quite a bit in this series and that's the human factor. And how your mind works and how you approach things can make a huge difference in how things turn out. And in this episode, I'm going to talk about two horses that were at a clinic in the UK recently. And one was a dressage horse and the other one, it's a nice, really nice warm blood mare and the other one was a an 18 hand shire horse and the the lady that has this shire horse she competes in different western events and they both wanted to work on something that had to do with the backup okay so for me when i teach a horse to back up the reason i want to teach a horse to back up is I, it's for me it's the place where i'm going to teach them how to shift their weight to their hocks so I want you know if the horse is standing like this and I ask them to back if their heads on this side here and I ask them to back up the first thing I'd like to do is that I'd like them to shift their weight backwards so what they'll tend to do is they'll use their abdominal muscles they will pick their front and their shoulders up they use their abdominal muscles and they start to bend their hocks start to bend the, the joints of the hind leg and for me it's a big part of self carriage and eventually collection but the ability to shift the horse's weight backwards so for me when i teach a horse to back up i'm not actually interested in going backwards you know there's there's very few times during the your actual day that you need to back a horse up actually a lot of times at clinics i'll say so can anybody list the times when you're with your horse during the day and you've got to have them back up and some people will say, well, you know, if I've got a two horse trailer, they've got to back up to get out of the trailer. And I said, yes, but you're not riding them in the trailer. I'm specifically t talking about backing a horse up under saddle. And some other people will say, well, when I go to open a gate, I need to back up. And I said, no, you don't need to back up to open a gate. You can choose to back up. You can open the, you know, you can unlatch the gate, ride your horse forward, pivot your horse around, back up and move your horse over and close the gate but you don't have to because you could just push the gate open ride through circle around and push it shut with the other hand you don't need to back up and the point I'm trying to make there is for the most part we never really get in a place where we have to back up we can pretty much always turn around so the backup itself the act of going backwards is not that important in the whole scheme of things for me it's very important though because it's like I said it's where I teach those horses to shift their weight backwards and so the, the dressage rider she's very very structured does a really good job and but her problem she's having with her mare is her mare doesn't sit okay her mare doesn't bend her hocks much she she tends to do things you know she doesn't just doesn't have that sit she has lots of push forward but not a lot of sit and so she really wanted to work on this you know she said i've, I've got the backup but she doesn't really want to sit in the back up. And it turned out when the mare backs up, she doesn't actually bend her hocks when she backs up. And the reason she doesn't bend her hocks probably as well as she should is because for me, when I'm teaching a horse to back up, it's about teaching their thoughts to go backwards. And you can actually make a horse go backwards without changing their thoughts. And what will happen is if you teach a horse to back up well, when you ask them to back up, their thoughts will go backwards. So they're thinking, I'm gonna go backwards. And they'll get themselves ready to go backwards. They will shift their weight backwards to their hind end. Then they will back up. And that's, for me, that's the big part, that shifting of the weight. And so the dressage lady, her name was Natasha, what she'd done is when she taught her horse to back up, she would shorten her reins, okay, get them where they wanted to be, and then she'd pick up and pull just a little bit more. And what tends to happen then is you've picked up and you asked your horse to back up, and then you pull a bit more, and you can actually pull enough to make the horse go backwards without their thoughts going backwards. So the thing I wanted to do with that horse was get that horse to think backwards. And now, so the other girl with the 18 hand shire, her horse, she can back him up and he tends to back up in the footfalls of one two three four and when a horse backs up 
they should back up diagonally, which means, you know, right front, left hind, left front, right hind. That's how a horse should back up, and that's how a horse backs up if they actually want to back up. And that lady's name was Tanika, and she said, so what I've been working on is trying to get him to back up diagonally. And I said, well, I don't usually work on trying to get them to back up diagonally. If they're not backing up diagonally, it tends to be because we've got them to back up without them actually thinking backwards. And so I said, let's see what your backup looks like. And when Tanika went to back her horse up, she picked up on the reins. It didn't pull terribly hard. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't a big pull, but she picked up on the reins and she took her legs off and she clucked. So she was doing a lot of, can you please back up? She was giving a lot of signals to get a horse to back up. And so I think she was getting him to back up without, uh, without him deciding to back up. And so I said, I want you to just use, you know, instead of doing a lot of stuff, I want you to just use the reins to ask him to back up. And what she, and this is where it all goes wrong, is what she would do is she would pick up on the reins, and then once she got the contact on the horse's mouth, she'd then pull a bit harder. And when she did that, when she picked up on the reins and then pulled harder, as she pulled harder, his head went in the air. So he braced up against her. And that's the, the secret to having them back up and think back up is get rid of that brace, which means you don't want to put that brace in there in the first place. Uh, the other horse was, the dressage horse was kind of the same too, where the rider picked up on the reins and then pulled more. And for me, what I want to do is teach them to where if I just pick up on the reins, just the slightest bit and hold it there, they should figure out how to step back off of that. So if you can think about teaching them to back up, and this is the way I teach them to back up, I'm not saying everybody should do this, this is how I do it. If you think about teaching them to back up, it's about them stepping into release versus stepping away from pressure. So there's not enough pressure there to actually make them back up. It's just a little feel right there and they step into the release. And so what I'll do a lot of times to demonstrate this is I will walk up to a horse, someone will be on their back. I'll walk up to a horse and just place my hands on their nose like this. And all I'm doing is just putting my hands on their nose. I'm not pushing like that. So if the horse was to step backwards right now, if this is my hand, this is the horse's nose. If the horse was to step backwards, it would look like that. Okay, it wouldn't look like that. My hands aren't pushing. They are just holding right there. And so with the dressage mare, I walked up to her and I put my hands there and it took quite a long time before she actually thought about stepping away from my hands. And you can see when she finally did it, the first thing she did was she shifted her weight backwards. You watch her hocks bend and her weight shift backwards. Her feet stay still. She shifts her weight backwards and then she steps back away from my hands and my hands stay in the one place in space. That's exactly how I'd like to teach a horse to back up when I pick up on the reins, is I'm not going to pull back and make them back up. I'm just going to pick up really slightly, hold my hands perfectly still, and wait for that horse to figure out how to step back and away from that. So how to decide to go back there. And like I said before, for me, it's so important they decide to go backwards because when they do, it's biomechanically correct. They will shift their weight back, before they back up, which means they thought about backing up, which means they got prepared to back up before they backed up. And so if you force a horse to back up, you can actually get them to back up before they prepare themselves. And I don't really want them to do that because we don't get that, we don't get them to shift their weight backwards. And so the big horse, when I, I so the girl showed me her backup. And like I said, she was doing probably a little bit more than I wanted her to do to get her horse to back up. And so the big horse, when I got on him to do it, initially when I picked up, there was no response. Absolutely, there was no response at all. And the, the human part of this, the mental part of this is you have to have no expectations. You've got to think, I'm just going to pick up here and wait. If you have expectations in your mind, your hands will start to turn like this. You'll start to do things. You'll try to help the horse to back up, but I don't want him to help him back up because once again, the horse hasn't changed his mind. For me, this is a, a mental exercise. They've really got to think about changing their mind. But the big guy, when I, when I did it with him, he, there was nothing, like nothing moved whatsoever. And so all I did with him was I kind of waited until he did something. So if, if the first thing I want to have the horse do is a response. Okay, and if you're getting it easily, if you easily get a response, then I just want to shape what, I want to 
choose what response I reward. But the big guy, when I got on him and asked him to back up, he stood there and he stood there for quite a long time. And at one point in time, he actually raised his head up. And when he raised his head up, I let go. Because what I, what I said to everybody there is, if I've got no response, I wanna reward some response. If there's some response, then I can shape, I can say, no, I'm not gonna reward that response and have him look for another response. But the first thing I've gotta do, especially with this big horse, is get him to think about doing something instead of making him do something. He's, he's a big horse, he weighs, I don't know, he's gotta weigh, I don't know, probably 1,200 pounds, if not more. I don't know what that is in kilos. 600 kilos or something, but he was, a, he was huge. He's 18 hands high. And so the thing is, if you have to pull to make him back up, then when you want to use that for bigger things later on, you have to pull harder. And there's only so many pounds of pull you can do uh, if you're doing all the work. So it's really about getting that horse to want to think about doing some work for us. All season long, we've been talking about the human factor and teaching these horses to back up is really no different. It's hard for a lot of people to do because we tend to want to try to make the horse do something versus just allow it to happen. And, and teaching this back up, that's what we're going to be able to do is just pick up and wait and let that horse figure it out. And what it's hard sometimes is to get your head around the fact that even with a horse this size, we are not making it happen. We're just setting it up and allowing it to happen. And sometimes you don't even know we're doing it. Like I'm pretty sure you didn't go, okay, I'm gonna pick up the reins and then cock my wrist so he backed up. Uh, you just see him take a big sigh right there. We go, he shifted his weight backwards, I let go. And there's that foot moving backwards. I'm just going to pick up here, wait. So for me, I'm really, really, I'm not, I appear to be really patient doing this. Hey, uh, Natasha, how long have you been riding that mare yesterday? Sorry? About four or five years, and you've been doing dressage stuff with her for about four or five years, and you still can't get it the way you want it, because she's got no sit. So if you think about it, the th this thing we worked on yesterday has kind of been missing for, you know, let's say three years at least. You've probably been working on the sit for that long. Um, and so a lot of people think, oh, you're so patient to sit there. This is purely through impatience. What I don't want to do is ride around for three or four years and, and because you think about this, it, working on this for me, this is about every time I pick up on two reins. What happens with their body when I pick up on two reins? If I rush this and get the wrong, teach the wrong response to the two reins, then everything I do for the next three years with two reins has that wrong response in it. And so three years later, we still don't have what we want. So, you know, this is, if you can understand how important this is to have in there correctly, then instead of sitting here thinking, oh, God, why isn't it taking, you know, why is it taking so long or whatever? It stops you from thinking that. And a lot of, a lot of times I think it's just your, your mindset, I think, that stops you from being frustrated or in a hurry or whatever. There you go. Her head raised up. Now, is that what I want? No, it's the opposite of what his head, sorry. We've got a mare at home that has a mane this long. And I'm just, I just keep thinking, her instead of him. Um, right then, he raised his head up. Do I want to reward him for raising his head up? Eventually, no. So where's my So earlier on I said it's very important that if the horse is not doing anything, then we reward them for doing something. It doesn't have to be the thing we want them to do, but we've got to teach them how to try. And so if they're trying nothing, when they try something, we're going to reward that and then eventually we will be able to shape that behavior as we go along really respond to stuff he's trying to go what see right there he just moved his head he's like am i supposed to be doing something here i'm just going to wait for him to figure this out so right now my hands are not pulling they're holding i mean if he puts slack in the reins 
the slack would come in the hands, my hand wouldn't move further back. I'm just going to wait here. Remember yesterday when Natasha was sitting down there doing this, and I said the biggest skill you need to be able to teach this to a horse is patience. Like right now you think, oh, it's not working, it's not working. It's working. His ears are moving, his head's kind of wiggling around. He's like, what can I do to make this go away? And at some point in time, he'll probably go to half asleep and think he can't do anything. Right there, there was a tiny little movement, and I'm going to let go. Okay, so I'm going to slowly close my fingers here. He did something, I'll let go. What I'm trying to do is get him to where he tries things when I just take the slack out of the reins. I mean, you've done a great job. This it look, it looks awesome. I'm going to be able to hop on him and, and make myself look like I know what I'm talking Right there, Liz, do you see that? As that head went down, I made sure I'm not going to allow him to pull on the reins. The only, it's just like on the groundwork. The only time the slack comes out of that is when I want a certain thing to happen. So right there I was talking to another one of the clinic participants who the previous day, she'd be sitting on a horse and would have the reins kind of half picked up for no reason at all and that horse would root its nose out and pull her hands forward and what she didn't realise, she was complaining about the horse doing it, but what she didn't realise is she was actually teaching it because if she's sitting there with a little bit of tension on the reins and that horse, if this is her hands and this is the horse's nose and the horse roots its nose forward and then pulls her hand forward and, and puts slack in those reins, then she's actually teaching that horse to do that thing. So I said, just make sure that you be aware when your horse goes to do it and before he pulls on you, give him slack so he can't actually learn to pull the reins out of your hand. If what we're after is a response, if there's no response, we're not after a particular response, we're after a response. When we can consistently get a response, then, there you go. So he just shifted his weight back right then as I picked the reins up, because he's like, okay, I've got to do something. What is it I'm going to do? He's starting to, starting to think a little bit. I'm going to slowly pick up on the reins here, right there, he shifts his weight backwards. And I'm like, oh, you guys see that starting to happen? So once I got him to where he started to offer behaviours, then I started to shape that behaviour and only reward him when he rocked back. So when he thought back and then he rocked back. And eventually we started getting a step and then two steps. And after I got it working, I put the rider back on and she started working on it. We finally got to where she could pick up on the reins really quite lightly and he could step back in that, that diagonal cadence step that she was originally trying to get him to do. And it was kind of the same process with the dressage horse as well. Um, you know, the, the big thing with that lady was she closed her fingers and then just pull a little bit. And that was enough to create that brace. And all I had to do was close her fingers and pick up and just wait. And after we got that mare doing it uh, quite a bit better, even the spectators noticed a huge difference. Yeah. Go ahead and just slowly pick up on the reins again. Now she's distracted, no big deal, and then she's not distracting. There you go. Good. Perfect. Oh, yeah, you, you, you could if you wanted to think backwards, but the thing is, I don't want to necessarily think backwards with that. The reason I don't want to is at some point in time, so this is kind of classical French dressage, hand without leg, leg without hand. At some point in time, I want to have both of them at the same time, that subtle, and have her really working off that. But if the only way I can get her to rock backwards is if I think backwards, and the only way I can get her to go forward is if I think forwards, I cannot think forwards and backwards at the same time. But if I have two separate things that mean one means forward and one means backwards, then I can pick up here, whoop, sit, and I can ride a forward. And it's not riding into a lot of stuff. It's just you're closing your fingers and you go in here. But for me, I really want to have my back up Q, aid, whatever you want to call it, my ask to back up be completely separate from anything else. And I don't want to use something in that that I have to use to go forward. Like if I have to squeeze my legs to back up and I squeeze my legs to go forward, how do I tell my horse to go forward and backwards at the same time? Does that make sense? You look a little confused. 
co-collection. Co-collection. Oh, right, yeah. I close my fingers here, and she should sit on a hox and start going backwards. And I say, right on, while you're going backwards, I want you to go forward. So she's, I'm, I'm trying to go backwards, and I'm going forwards while I'm still going backwards. So if I, if I squeeze my legs to have it go backwards, and I squeeze my legs to have it go forward, I can only use my legs to get it to do one of those things at a time. I want to have both happen at the same time. And you don't just have it go backwards and forwards at the same time. It's transitions. You'll be going forward. But when I do a downward transition, I don't want it to slow down. I want it to shift the weight back, rock back, then slow down, and then I would go forward. So they'd be transitions like between gates and things, or maybe within a gate. But after a while, you're going along, and you close your fingers, and they bend their hocks, and you add leg. You don't have to slow down. You can. Just, it's almost like a... It's almost like a half halt sort of thing. Does that make sense there? So it seems like that's just a very, very simple concept, but that, the thing we taught that mare right there, that, that to bending her hocks and rock her weight back when we close our fingers, like you saw right there, is gonna carry over into all the forward, all the, the other ridden work, all of her downward transitions. And if you think about the downward transitions, putting your downward and upward transitions is what gonna, it's what's gonna teach you collection, which is kind of the holy grail for a lot of people. And if you think about the thing that we really had to change, it was not so much our technique, of course we had to change our technique a little bit, but the biggest thing we had to change was our perception and our expectations. And all the way along through this series, I've been talking about the, the human part of this. And if we have, you know, frustrations because it's not happening fast enough, or if we have expectations of it taking a certain amount of time, or we just want it to happen so bad that we're not, you know, we're not patient, that can really get in the way a lot of a lot of things. So hopefully during this whole series you've got to understand a little bit about number one, the, the horse factor, which is the don't go to bed angry principle, ways to get your horse to relax. But if you look at the thing that really controls that, it's it's us being able to control our thoughts control our emotions, control our energy, and through all that, control what our physical things do. So I really hope you've enjoyed this whole series of the principles of training, and I hope it really helps you uh, have a much better time with your horse.